Hi, Tony here. Um, thought I'd do another video to uh, show an autopilot uh, system that I've been working on uh, these last few days. Um, the Bendix King KAP140. Um, this particular autopilot um, comes um, in three different um, variations. You can see here I've got the um, user properties uh, window up in Air Manager uh, just to show you the uh, the user properties for this particular instrument and this this one that I was talking about in terms of the uh, the three different models uh, is the first one that you get to select so you can choose a single axis uh, autopilot uh, a two axis autopilot or a two axis with altitude pre-select which is what we're going to um, show on the demo um, today simply because it has all the functions that the other ones uh, also have but it obviously has uh, the extra altitude uh, pre-select. Pre the other ones are just dumbed down versions essentially of, of this so uh, the functions that you see on this demo today are very uh, similar to the uh, to the other two models just that they don't have all the buttons and dials on the, on the display so you get a different uh, a look bezel uh, if you choose a different option. We have uh, some um, other basic uh, parameters here, um, max descent and climb rate uh, and surface ceiling. You can plumb those in yourself, those numbers, uh, these are just the defaults, um, um, but you may want to change them depending on the aircraft. And then we have a couple of uh, tick boxes here. Um, the, air, the autopilot itself behaves a little differently in terms of the enunciations and displays that uh, it shows up depending on how you're sequencing between uh, modes depending on if you have a HSI fitted or, or just a standard directional gyro um, so you have the option to uh, tick HSI if you have one of those uh, in the particular aircraft that you're using this autopilot with and then the last uh, op uh, tick box here is um, auto barrow uh, correction what that essentially does is um, that um, and that enables a, a real life um, a functionality uh, that the autopilot has in so much as um, it can take a, a, a barrow correction signal from an EFIS or, or uh, um, an encoding altimeter um, to have its barrow uh, corrected uh, automatically via this um, electrical signal uh, that goes into the back of the uh, flight computer. Um, so you have the option to tick that option if uh, that's the sort of installation that uh, you want in your aircraft. Uh, we're going to leave it unticked just so that I can show you how to do the manual uh, barrow uh, setting uh, on today's uh, demo. So let's get started. Let's uh, get rid of this uh, air manager window. So on this little test panel that I've um, got set up here, you can see I've got a um, directional gyro and a um, altimeter just so that we can see uh, those parameters um, when we're going offline and then the flight computer at the bottom here so let's uh, power up it goes through a self-test uh, sequence when you first apply power um, um, pre-flight test it runs through a sequence of different tests in the real world this would be testing the servos and the various other functions uh, and elements of the autopilot system just to make sure that everything's working it enunciates all the displays and then you can hear a tone there which is the autopilot disconnect uh, tone um, what you see flashing here is the um, barrow um, setting it's prompting you to set the barrow before you uh, go flying so you can alter these with the dial here um, or you can um, just accept uh, what's there and, and change it later if you want to and you accept it just by pressing the, the barrow figure and we can get back into that barrow setting window by just by clicking that barrow again and there you go we have control over it so I think um, it's one unit for each on the inner knob here and then if you go to the outer knob it changes it by uh, 10 at a time uh, now the important thing to note here is on the user settings that I showed you just a minute ago um, if you had that auto um, um, setting ticked then you wouldn't have got that flashing barrow because there is no barrow to set um, because it is getting the information automatically so it would have just dropped straight into this um, um, window that you see here um, with the altitude pre-select um, figure there no flashing barrow you still have the option to push the barrow button and bring up the actual barrow figure that is getting that's auto-corrected from uh, but you don't have the ability to change it so if you try to change it with the dial thing happens 
Um, you can change the unit, um, whether you're on automatic or, or manual, and you do that by pushing in the barrel button and holding it, and it'll toggle um, over to um, the other unit. So you see there we've toggled over to uh, inches of mercury, and then if we want to go back, um, we can just go back to um, hesca uh, hectopascals, pardon me. So there's a timeout on the, the, that menu, and um, you'll see on the VS uh, menu in a minute when we get going. Uh, there's about a three-second timeout on those menus. So if you don't uh, touch the uh, buttons or adjust the dials in that time, then um, it will drop back down into this um, altitude pre-select value, uh, which is the default for that um, top right-hand corner of the uh, of the autopilot display. So I've got the sim running um, here. So what I'm going to do is get underway and then we'll uh, see if we can get the uh, autopilot fired up and you can see some of the functions uh, in action so I'm making a little bit of a botched takeoff here Okay, so now when you hold this autopilot button down, what you have to do is you have to hold it down for about 0.25 of a second. So I'm just trying to get the uh, aeroplane into a nice wings level uh, position. You see the minute figure that just comes up there t uh, temporarily and then it um, clears. So what we have there is um, or what we have on the display now should I say um, is we have it drop automatically into a uh, roll mode so that will maintain however you had your roll position uh, before the auto autopilot was engaged and um, the VS mode so what we're going to do I'm going to explain those again in a little bit I'm just going to want the heading around a little bit and we're just going to select heading mode Just uh, clearing some terrain here. Okay, so essentially um, what I've done there is I've just selected uh, heading mode there and you can see now um, the uh, autopilot is flying the uh, heading bug on the direct directional gyro uh, there, just settling down and it's uh, enunciated with heading here. If I want to drop back into that roll mode again, I could just push that heading thing and I'm now we're in roll. We're back into roll mode, so essentially it if I change the uh, heading uh, bug, then uh, it stays flying uh, how it was in the uh, roll mode there, and then heading again, and it will fly that heading again. So essentially that heading button um, will just toggle between those two modes, heading and uh, roll modes, and you can decide uh, what you want to do there in terms of that function so fairly straightforward um, the default um, VS that it enters when you first turn the autopilot on here um, is your vertical speed so that will capture which whatever your uh, vertical speed was at the time of you um, pressing that and engaging the autopilot so um, you, it, and it flashes it up in this area very temporary for about three seconds or so um, just to enunciate to you um, what that uh, value was, I think it was about 500 feet per minute um, in this particular case. But you have the option to either change them while it's while it's visible there, or if you don't quite manage that in time, you can push uh, one of these buttons and see um, uh, alter that value just by it changes it 100 feet at a time um, for each click of the up or the down button. Now you can um, let's just sorry. You can um, also hold down the button. So when you, if you hold it down, it jumps. You see there, 300 feet at a time for holding it down. So about every second, it will it will jump about 300 feet. Um, or you can just push it once and just get the 100 feet for every click, which is I think what I prefer. So they're the two um, two modes slightly differently. If you just click it once or if you hold it down. Now, so we gradually just sort of uh, climbing here, coming through um, 3,000 feet now. 
and you can see the altitude pre-selector is now set to 7,000 feet. You adjust that by these uh, dials here, so 100 feet at a time on the inner dial and 1,000 feet on the outer dial. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, and you can see, one thing I didn't show you there, so we're in just VS mode there with no uh, arm um, set to capture there. Every If I adjust the uh, pre-select value in any way, um, you'll see that it, it will automatically arm. So I can I can arm it by pushing the arm button, or, or I can turn that off. So that's the, the altitude um, hold arm. So essentially when we get to this 7,000 feet, it will automatically toggle if I if I'm into the altitude hold mode. If I don't, then it will just carry on going through that thousand feet. It will still enunciate the the, the altitude preselect functions, and you'll hear tones uh, when when we get to uh, a certain value before our target altitude. And if we leave our target altitude, there's some tones and some enunciations that come up on the. So I'm just going to press the Alt button for a moment, just so that we um, we level off around. Uh, Oh, this before uh, 4,000 feet there, and you can see now it, it, I've just forced it to go into alt mode again. Similar to the heading uh, button, the alt button toggles between alt and vs. So there you go. There's the 700 feet per minute climb that we left it in last time, and there it goes. It's off climbing again. Press the alt button back into altitude capture again, and we've stopped climbing. So. Just while it's we're fixed on an altitude here, and I'm got to worry uh, too much about the altitude uh, pre-select functions. We'll just talk about the uh, the next few buttons on the uh, on the bezel here. So we've spoken about the heading uh, button. The next three are all uh, um, lateral modes, but they're related to the navigation functions in terms of um, jumping out of the roll or the or the heading modes into one of these um, three modes here. So nav is just your traditional. Um, following an, uh, a navigation uh, source, maybe for a, a, an on-route um, type navigation. Approach is exactly um, uh, what it says there, that it enables you to fly an approach, an ILS or something like that, um, and that will capture the localizer and glide slope and, and fly the ILS for you. And then the REV or uh, reverse button is essentially the back course, um, so that will, en that will enable you to fly the the back course of a of a localizer, just with the opposite sense, of course, uh, and no glide slope. So you can select these buttons by clicking them, and you can see it flashes the uh, heading there to uh, prompt you uh, if you want to to uh, change the heading bug um, to maybe what the what the course line is going to be. And you can see we're now just in a, a nav arm because I've pushed the nav button so we're armed ready to capture uh, so if we ha if we were actually flying an intercept to a to a, um, a navigation course then um, w when we got to that capture point uh, the autopilot would toggle over and this would enunciate nav at the top here and the arm would disappear and it would obviously jump out of heading mode so these modes are very similar in that respect so uh, approach um, does a similar thing uh, as does reverse and then you can turn them off. So I can't really demo or show you them today because I don't have any navigation uh, sources um, set up. I'm not really near uh, any uh, airports on in the sim um, currently and that would take a little bit more time to actually uh, demo that but it works very similar to the um, to the um, default sim um, capturing of the uh, of the navigation source. Okay so on to um, next button, the ALT button, I've, I've kind of already said that it's similar to the heading button in so much as that the ALT button toggles between the VS and the ALT modes as I've shown already. Um, and that, that's it, is it in, in, in its um, basic form that is just a simple um, thing toggling between the altitude hold mode and the VS mode. So at any time if you're not in the altitude hold mode, uh, uh, denoted by this ALT uh, in the display here, then you hit the ALT button and it will capture that current um, heading. Oops sorry uh, altitude and um, level off the aircraft if you was in a, a, a climb or descend and um, hold it at that altitude when you push the button. If you want to then transition to another altitude that's where you use the the VS mode the vertical speed mode and you set the appropriate uh, climb uh, uh, rate or the descent rate if, if it's a, a descent 
and, and this is where the attitude preselect uh, functions um, come in. Now, so if we um, if we just um, come out of there and into VS mode, let's just very quickly bring that down to no climb or descend. So it should just uh, have a a VS of zero there. So it's just sort of uh, going to stay around the altitude that we were at before because we're not asking it to climb or descend uh, currently. Now. To bring obviously the, the menu back up, as I explained before, you touch the buttons once to bring the menu up, and then it will clear within three seconds. Uh, so either the up or the down button will do that, and then you just press one or the other uh, after the initial press to uh, to give you that um, toggle up, or you can hold it down and get that 300 uh, feet increase uh, approximately every second. Um, what we um, we'll look at now is we'll look at some uh, actually doing that and, and actually transcending to a, to another um, to another um, altitude using the um, the VS mode and watching it capture uh, with the altitude preselect and the alerts that will come up and that's and there's a lot that happens there so which is why I'm sort of holding it here for a minute and we're going to transition to uh, other uh, altitudes so what we're, we're somewhere around 4200 at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the altitude preselect to and no, at 5,000 is a little low. We'll set it to 5,400. Okay. So now, because I've touched the um, dial again, now you see it's automatically put the alt arm because it thinks now I've just dialed a, a, a new altitude preselect. So it's automatically armed the altitude capture thing. And when we get to 5,500 feet, it will automatically toggle to alt mode. We haven't actually asked it to climb yet, so that's the next thing that we're going to do. We push the button and we're going to say. We'd like to climb, please. So I'm gonna. Oh, I think 700 feet per minute. It's okay. So here we go. We've began our climb, and when we get within a thousand feet of 5,500, which is just approaching there, 4,500, you should hear some tones to tell us that we're within a thousand feet. There we go. So five short bursts of tone, and you can see now alert has come up here on the. Uh, on the display just to alert us that we're, we were in a thousand feet of our target altitude. Filter pipe will carry on uh, climbing. And if I want to I can turn the uh, I could turn this uh, arm to stay off if I want to I'm not going to but um, I'm gonna let the autopilot carry on climbing the aircraft just coming up through 5,000 feet now. And when we get within 200 feet of the 5,500 feet target altitude here. Um, this alert annunciation should go out. And then as we approach the actual altitude, you should just see a short on off flash of the, uh, there we go. So it's gone off now. That's at the 200 feet prior mark. We're coming up to 100 feet just before now. There you see, just as we're beginning to approach the target, we've automatically toggled into the altitude hold mode. And then as we approach 5,500 feet, you should just see the alert just flash on and off just to let us know that we've actually reached that uh, pre-selected value of 5,500. There we go. So alert is on and off. And that's it. That is the um, sequence, if you like, um, using the altitude pre-selector just to uh, give you um, uh, the enunciations and the tones to let you know um, that you're um, approaching the um, pre-selected value that you've selected. So now, if we if we want to do that again, so let's say, for instance, we don't change the altitude um, pre-selected value now. Um, maybe we're hand flying. Um, this is um, essentially important to say that you notice this this was up before we actually turn the autopilot on so the altitude pre-select functions will still function without the autopilot actually uh, engaged when the servos flying the airplane so if you're hand flying you can still use the altitude uh, pre-select functions to warn you of changes in uh, altitude or when you're approaching um, um, altitudes as long as obviously you dial the correct figure in here so what we're going to do now is not change the 5500 feet is we're going to go back into a VS mode and we're going to ask it to climb again this time there we go as we leave the target out of altitude of 5500 feet it's going to warn us after about 200 feet that we've 
we're outside of uh, the 200 foot window of, of our targeted altitude because we haven't actually said we want to go to there we go there are the tones to warn us and now you can see the alert is flashing uh, on the display here to warn us that we've actually left our target altitude so we've drifted outside of the 200 foot window and that will stay flashing now um, that alert uh, symbol or um, graphic should I say um, until we get a thousand feet away from our targeted alt altitude so it's a little bit erratic flashing on and off there but that's due to um, the low spec machine that I'm running on here uh, the frame rate is um, is dropping down a, f a fair bit while I'm running this demo though so that's as a result of uh, why the thing but it should just flash uh, consistently just on and off um, when I upgrade this machine it should uh, run a lot better so we're just coming up to the 5,500 feet or 1,000 feet above the 5,500 feet should I say and we should see that alert will actually stop flashing when we get to that there we go so we're we're a thousand feet away now so we obviously clearly don't care about the uh, the 200 feet winning so it's it's stopped flashing and, and reminding us of that um, so good for if you're hand flying it's unlikely the auto that would ever come into fruition if the uh, autopilot was obviously flying the airplane unless something uh, had gone wrong um, that you would that you would drift more than 200 feet away from your targeted altitude um, so yeah you're more likely to set a new altitude and then fly to that uh, that new uh, altitude either via um, a climb or a descend to that so we'll go back to altitude hold that and there you go you can see that just as I press that around about 7,000 feet there we're just beginning to uh, level off and, and go to 7,000 feet so um, the only thing left to say really is just just to say that um, uh, within Plane Maker, um, you have to um, to get the, the, the full benefit of this autopilot in terms of the changing of the modes. You have to um, go into Plane Maker, and I think it's under um, System. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the menu, but um, there's a, there's a um, there's a menu in there where you you can um, select the um, altitude pre-select function, and you can turn on the um, 500 feet, 400 feet, 300 feet um, reminders um, depending on the type of aeroplane that you want. So you just want to make sure that you go in and t untick all of those um, um, pre-select and altitude automatically arms. I can't remember what they're all called, but there's a there's a few in there. Um, my Cessna had a couple of them ticked and it was giving me a few strange behaviour uh, in terms of uh, not letting the actual instrument uh, do, do the handling of the modes. It was The sim was uh, trying to do that as well at the, at the same time. So if you untick them when you're using uh, this autopilot, you'll see it will behave just as I've shown you in the demonstration today. I hope you enjoyed the demo. Um, I'm sure there will be some more videos um, with some other things coming up soon. Um, speak to you soon. Thanks very much.